Fred Lakeland University and the Wilson Gym where tonight the Muskies take on MSOE in the first conference game of the 2016-2017 season. Chris, both teams come in 0-2. We had a chance to see uh, Lakeland last week. They have some talent that they can cut down on the turnovers. Yeah, turnovers were a big thing, and they committed a lot of fouls. But, you know, lacrosse is a really good team. We said that last week, defending conference champions. They come in here. They're a little bit, you know, just a little more sharper than Lakeland was last week, I thought. And, you know, as the season progresses, you're going to get a little bit better. Um, I think Lakeland's still trying to find themselves a little bit, but definitely the turnovers were a big issue, especially in that first half. As a coach, you always hope the team you had the first few weeks of the season is not the same team as you had in the last part of the season. Uh, the history of the series, this is the 92nd meeting tonight. Lakeland has a commanding lead and wins, but uh, last year they lost both meetings, so they got their work cut out for them. Yeah, they do. It's kind of a weird thing. It, in the season prediction by the coaches, uh, Lakeland was picked six and MSOE seven, so you know, who knows what we're going to see. At least we got teams that are kind of identical, and you're right. Last year, MSOE won both games, and uh, now coming in here, it's a fresh start, and you know, some familiar for maybe some of your fans is the coach of MSOE, Brian Miller. Oh, that was my next question. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Chris. Ryan Miller uh, was the coach here at Lakeland in the 90s and some very successful teams. And uh, Brian and I go way back. We used to do some clinics together and things like that when, when I was doing some coaching. And he's a great guy, and he's been down in Lakeland, or excuse me, MSOE for like 13 years now. And, you know, he's tried to recruit some kids around the area there. You know, MSOE's always used to be kind of a tough place to go to school. I mean, an engineering school, and, you know, you got it's a really, it's a really good school to go to. And he's gotten some kids in there that not only are really smart, but can play basketball, too. So would Stanford be the MSOE of the West? I think it would be of this conference, of the NAC conference, that's for sure. I mean, you got to be pretty smart to go down there. And like I said, he's kind of blended the, uh, the, the academics and the athletes, and he's had some very good teams over the years. I was looking at their uh, stats they had online. I believe it was from the uh, UWM game, or maybe it was the Beloit game. But anyway, they had two guys that played, uh, one played 29 minutes, the other played 22 minutes. They were not starters. They had uh, 16 and 13 points. So, you know, you got to wonder, he's got a pretty deep bench, you would think, at least uh, go seven deep for sure. Yeah, and I was looking at them a little bit in the warm-ups, too. They got some size as well. So, you know, they, they had a really nice game the other day against Beloit. They were actually leading on the road down there and just got smoked in the second half, kind of like Lakeland did in their opener uh, the other day when they played on uh, Northland. You know, they got, they did really good in the second half, but a bad first half in the cross, too. They they seemed to play the first 18 minutes, and then the last 20 or 22 minutes just didn't turn out so good for the Muskies. Looking at the notes on our uh, sheet set uh, we get from the AD, and uh, it said 40 free throws by lacrosse last last uh, week when we had the game and uh, we're certainly hoping that there's a little more flow to the contest than last time. Uh, you had mentioned it, Lakeland uh, didn't seem like a step behind lacrosse, not quite as quick, and uh, we mentioned it a couple times, they need to move their feet on defense. Yeah, they do, and again, it was, you know, I, I said it on the telecast last week, you know, officials at the beginning of the year are always told that we're going to emphasize these things, and I think there was a lot of you know, bumping in things that as the year progresses, that's going to let it go. And even the players are kind of looking at each other a little bit. And, you know, maybe we're going to probably get a little bit of that tonight because, you know, again, when, when officials go to the meetings and stuff and they read the rules, this is kind of the stuff we're going to try to change and things. So hopefully there'll be a lot left because there wasn't a lot of flow in the game last week at all. And we almost said that there was like 10 more fouls than there was minutes. And it, and there was no there was no flow to that game whatsoever. So. I remember going to those umpire meetings and leaving the, leaving the meeting with the rule sheet and everybody crinkling them up and throwing them in the wastebasket. We're going to step out and we come back. We'll have uh, the starting lineups and a tip-off for tonight's game. from your neighborhood to your naturehood. To find a neighborhood park or green space near you, visit discovertheforest.org. 
You know what, guys? There's a lot of tree branches and dry brush over here. We should probably move the bonfire over there. I'm guessing Smokey liked that idea. There are 16 million children struggling with hunger in America. That's one in five daughters, sons, neighbors, and classmates who don't know where their next meal is coming from. Yet billions of pounds of good food go to waste every year. It's time we do something about it. Feeding America is a nationwide network of food banks that helps provide meals to millions of kids and families in need. Visit feedingamerica.org to help them feed even more. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're Feeding America. Back at uh, Lakeland University, they're announcing the uh, starting lineups for uh, Lakeland now. That was Joshua McNeil, and uh, the fifth starter for uh, Lakeland is number 34, Eric Nygaard. The other uh, three were Mark Chris Gavich, number four, Brandon James, number 11, Pat McDonald. And uh, you saw McNeil and uh, Nygaard. For uh, the Raiders of MSOE, they start uh, Jason Polisi, number three. Number 12 is uh, Colin Subert. Number 21, Mac, Max Wojcik. He did not start last game, but he was one of the kids, Chris, I was talking about. He played 29 minutes and had 13 points, so he earned his way into the starting lineup tonight. Uh, Dylan Sommerfeld, number 42, and number 50, Tegan Miles uh, are the other starters for uh, There's Aaron Annenson, the uh, head coach for uh, Lakeland. And the tip is controlled by the Muskies. Both teams, like we mentioned, come in 0-2. Uh, it's the first conference game of the season, so this one means a lot. Jump shot from deep in the corner is uh, no good. And goes out of bounds. A lot of red on those uniforms, Chris. Yep, they're bright. So what clinics did you and uh, Miller work oh, together? Oh, boy. I don't they used out to here at here. Lakeland, out here, yeah. Out here at Lakeland, uh, the Wolf Camp used to be out here as well. And uh, we would come out here and... I remember working a uh, Milwaukee Bucks camp out here years ago. First layup attempt is up and in for uh, Chris Gavich. Well, easy Eddie McCall used to come out here with Desso and then now... <laughs> He was old back then. Yep, and then, uh, <laughs> of course, uh, Jeff and Joe came into town, and that was a nice little group together. And there's a fade equalizer. Away. Yeah, fadeaway jumper by Wojcik. Early action here at uh, the Wilson Gym on the campus of Lakeland University. Well, at least the weather's turned into uh, basketball weather again, Marty. Yeah. You know, it's nice and cold. Short jumper in the lane is up and in by McNeil. For a second there, I thought the hoop didn't want it. McNeil had a nice game against the cross. Very active in that first half. James had uh, 16 points in the first half, but couldn't quite get it up to 20, finished with 19. And as he goes, I think the team goes. Too many turnovers for him the other day. But that's what he can do. He's pretty special. He had 16 in the first half, but only ended up with, I believe, 19, 20? 19 he had. He had yep, a free 19. throw at the end to and get the 20, it. right? And he didn't, couldn't put it in. His free throw shooting in the second half was uh, not very good. Another nice shot by uh, Wojcik. And you can see why he earned his way into the starting lineup. Well, our opponents are shooting 50% against Lakeland. I think that's something, Marty, you emphasize quite a bit is they're going to have to get stops on this end. 
they're going to have a successful season, and so far it hasn't been that way. It's one of the things that a good defensive team will do is uh, hold down the shooting percentage. Just like the other day, coming out of the shoot, both teams red hot. MSOE 3 of 4 and Lakeland 4 of 5. Three-point attempt is no good. Battle underneath, Nygaard came away with it. His second rebound. McDonald lost it on the way up, hit the back of the backboard. That'll go as a turnover. Nygaard averaging four and a half rebounds a game. We mentioned the other day, he's a local product. Gabe Ware checking in. From Plymouth. Ware is? No, uh, Nygaard, Nygaard is. yep. Right. I didn't see any local guys uh, on the roster for uh, MSOE. Nope. That's a nice move. Ware right off the bench, couldn't get it to go in. Had a good look. Hanging up and putting it in was uh, Krzygiewicz on a good hanger at the top of his jump. I was made aware, Chris. Oh, wow. Wojciech again, he's got six. Of a documentary that I watched on uh, Netflix called Fastball. And it was all about the fastball, the scientific part of it. And uh, I didn't see who scored that basket. Uh, that basket was made by McDonald. Oh, threw it away. Anyway, going back to what I was saying is, you know, they say the ball, when it's released by the pitcher, it always goes on a darn downward arc, even on a fastball where it appears to rise. And where am I going with all this? Was saying how that kid was hanging in the air. You know, you go up and you come down. You don't hang there. <laughs> Our officials tonight are uh, Tim Diener, Steve Lupke, and Eric Butala. We had a nice uh, chat with those gentlemen prior to the game. Did you find out where they're from? Uh, one is that one said he's uh, safely distant from the Deaners of Fond du Lac, so I don't <laughs> think he's from Fond du Lac. But no, I didn't. Service checks in the ball game, his first uh, action. Thirteen to eight, Lakeland on top. McNeil with a one for two trip. Not a good place to give up your dribble, son. Ooh, you're right there. Almost a steal that time. Yeah, Carlton just quicker to the spot, Marty. Right. That's that quickness you talked about in, at the beginning, you know, about moving their feet. McDonald doing a nice job of moving his feet there, not drawing the foul. Yeah. Service uh, shuffled the feet. That was a good call. Chris had it, was all over that one. Way too, too many turnovers this year for uh, Lakeland. So far, so good. There you see uh, Miller at the top of your screen in front of his bench. 16 turnovers a game. This is his 13th year at uh, MSOE. Oh boy, easy one missed and uh, service comes away with the rebound. That almost looked like a travel by uh, Carlton, not called. Well, they missed service underneath Marty, but they got the basket anyways. <laughs> McNeil. Makes a basket, that's his uh, fourth and fifth point with 421 left in the first half. Lakeland on top, 15 to eight. 30 second time out, so we'll keep it here. We're seeing uh, better defense, a little better shooting too by the Muskies. Very good shooting by the Muskies. There's six of eight, Marty. That's really good shooting. I mean, MSOE is at about 50%, Marty, but they can't stay up with uh, the fish so far. 
I know it's early. We're only five and a half minutes in, a little over that, but uh, Lakeland has not had many turnovers. Well, you got them for two, one. maybe? One. Yeah, one. Just threw that one there on that travel. Okay. What about when he threw the shot up off the backboard, the back of the backboard? Nice shot, kind of has a shot. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Coach Miller calls timeout, kind of maybe break the mojo, and here's something we haven't seen by the Muskies in the first half. Yeah, they I tried it a little bit against lacrosse, but that was way too late. I thought, uh, speaking of changing your defense, Greg Gard did a good job of changing his defense uh, against Tennessee coming out of a timeout in the second half. And they're, they don't normally do that. No, they don't play his own much. That shot was by uh, James, but he couldn't get it to go, and uh, MSOE oh. looked like a block, but they say he got the arm, so uh, picking up the foul is gonna be Brandon James. He a couple of free throws for Delafossi. De uh, pardon me, uh, Greg Pig. Yeah, and he's... Not attempted any shots. He's from Nicolet High School. He started the first game, Chris. Uh, Woodchuck might be uh, might be the person that replaced uh, Pig from the first game starting starters. There you see Brian Miller. Almost a turnover. Yeah, McDonald pushing hard to the basket. Couldn't get it. Service gets away with an over the back or no call. A good no call on that. Yeah, but good positioning on that region. rebound by Wojciech there. Fifteen to ten. Lakeland on top. Good quick step and the uh, shot is blocked. We'll check uh, not bashful tonight. Oh, good, good block D. by McNeil, holding his ground. Campos taking it to the hole. Couldn't get the bounce. Rolling down to the 12:40 uh, mark. A lot the quicker first half. Uh, half than uh, this last week. Yeah, knock you're right. on wood. <laughs> yeah, really. Don't say too much. Just two fouls in the whole game. Oops, <laughs> three. Oh. A foul went on uh, McNeil. That's his first. Well, we mentioned this before last week. Seven of the first eight games for uh, Lakeland is uh, at home. This is the third one. Next week they go to Edgewood, then they're home for four more. Uh, MSOE's next game is uh, Wednesday the 30th. They play at Edgewood also. Long possession here for MSOE. Yes. Hopefully they can, uh, Lakeland can stop them. Shot clock is down to 10 and then we get a whistle yeah, in the moving, lane. Moving screen by the big fella. He stepped out on that screen, Marty, and the officials did not. Did not appreciate that. <laughs> did not miss it. That's uh, Miles from Burlington Catholic. They've been a pretty good basketball program. He's a 6'7 junior, number 50. Mitchell School in the ball game, number five for the Muskies. James has it on the wing. Dumped on the Nygaard who makes nice. a good pass in the middle of the lane for McNeil. 
Neal's three for four, but good ball movement that time by the fish to get the easy, nice little four-footer there. Nygaard going for the steal. He got a little help underneath. And then we're going to get a foul on McNeil. Unofficially, I got both teams with nine guys in the game already. That's Both teams go pretty deep. Oh, boy, that was pretty ticky-tack. Wow. And that's uh, second foul there on McNeil. And yeah. McNeil's been their best offensive player with three buckets. And a free throw. He's got seven points in the ball game. The other day, uh, Lakeland had several players with two fouls, and Anenson wasn't afraid to put those guys back in. Uh, I can't remember who the player was, but one of them did pick up the third foul. So it'll be interesting to see how he handles it this game. Once again, a long possession for MSOE. 11 seconds on the shot clock. Good step out. Well, kind of got caught in the air without uh, getting a look at the rim. Three ball is good. That one by Wojciech again. He has nine points. Lakeland lead is down to four. School trying to drive it in amongst the tall timber and uh, had it blocked. Who did that? Mitchell School. Oh, yeah, School, yeah. Three ball again, Marty. Ooh, again. Uh, was that by uh, Mc... Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Kimsey, number 23? No. Wojcik again. Again? Oh, man. He uh, took 17 shots the other day. They make one three. He was 0 for 4. Not the same tonight. He's 5 for 5. The other day it was 35%. So somebody used to tell me that uh, if you missed your last five shots, shoot the next five because you'll make them. Because yeah, right. you're a 50% shooter. Watch the swing here. Boom. Nothing but the bottom of the net. Somebody ought to guard him. Bobby Knight had a rule on uh, some games that you were assigned a player, like the team's best shooter. He's a good outside shooter. He would say, you have no help responsibility. You just stay with that guy yep. all the time. I would do that with some of my guys. You know, don't, if somebody drives to the basket else. by it, don't yep. help. You yep. don't want him to touch the ball. If you're a special player like, you know, what we'll team has that tonight. Tonight, yeah. Of course, he might come out the second half and score two. But, uh, oh, McDonald lost it, but they're going to say it went off of a MSOE player. That was 17 to 10, and then back to back threes by the Raiders to get them within one. It's time for a fish basket. Yeah, exactly. Got to get James going here. Yeah, he hasn't uh, done a whole lot. Nygaard with a nice drive to the basket. Couldn't get it in. Service with a turnaround put back. He got it. Lakeland up three. Thought Service did a nice job the other night, too. Not too bad. Tip away that time. Lively hands by uh, Chris Gavich but uh, not able to save it. 9.43 left in the first half. Pelosi looking to go to the basket, had his shot blocked by James. Shot clock at four. Deep ball is off, no good. Lakeland comes away with it. Service with a good play. James lost it on the way up. Ooh, got stepped on. Okay, Mr. Wright, turnover or a shot? I put that, gave him a shot for that, Marty. Okay. 
We'll keep that turnover. <laughs> the turnover is down. A There's good one. steal. Nygaard with a dive for the ball, and Lakeland's got it back. James had everybody faked out, including his own teammate. McDonald, looked like he might have got fouled on the way up. Service with an offensive board. Chris Kavich in the lane. No. Couple of good shot attempts, Chris. Just couldn't get it in. I got MSOE with 11 guys in the game now, Marty. Holy cow. Nice idea. Yep, good backdoor cut. Just uh, didn't get it to go. Five turnovers now on MSOE. And for those of you scoring along at home, mine aren't always exact. <laughs> <laughs> we just try to be close. When I total up the scores, I like it to be close. <laughs> Within a point or two. <laughs> James got those two early baskets, hasn't had one for a while. That should be an easy one. Yeah, he should have taken it from 10 feet, kissed it off the glass. Just gave it, good look, but couldn't get it in. And Nygaard takes an ugly fall to the floor. He's sitting up now, but uh, it looked terrible from where we're sitting. Two muskies went for the fake, and Nygaard was the one that got on top the shooter. That was so bad, Scott doesn't even want to report oh, <laughs> it. He is. Ooh! A total flip. At the line is Sommerfeld. His first free throws of the year. And we're here to see it. Oh. Yeah, we can judge it. We can judge his form. Good knee bend, good follow through. And kiss it off the glass. You gotta call that, son. A little more knee bend, Marty. I think he should shoot it exactly the same way. There you go. Two for two trip makes it a one point lead for uh, the Muskies now. Eight minutes left. James coming into the game averaging seven turnovers a game. He has zero so far. That's a bad pass. Yeah, trying to get it to service. It would have been a good pass had he been moving towards it, but uh, he was camped out underneath. Hard to slip it through by, slip it through three defenders. Pig had it for a moment. Good shot fake. Looked like service may have committed a foul, but no call. Making the good move was uh, Darville. Yeah, we're going to get a blocking foul on that one. Just four fouls apiece now, Marty. Oh, excuse me, that's just the third on MSOE. Pig commits his first foul. They're calling it on Summerfeld 32, I believe, not Pig. I thought it was on 42, Marty. That's what I said, 42, Summerfield. <laughs> Carlton uh, got fouled on the way in. Lakeland will keep it. That evens up the uh, foul scoreboard, Chris. Here's a hold. And that's three fouls in about two seconds. Coach Miller not liking that. But that was an easy one, too. You can't grab the guy. Sommerfeld picked up that second foul. And now he has two. And uh, the Raiders of MSOE have four. And a two-pointer by James is good. He's three of five. Lakeland up three. There's a turnover. 
That's going to be an over and back. Oh, wow. wow. How can you not call that? And no foul. Wojciech's going to get called for the foul. He didn't like it. And uh, Lakeland looked a little disjointed the last couple of possessions, Chris, offensively. Yes, but they're at the line chance to extend that three-point right. lead. Bailed out on fouls as MSOE's committed four in under a minute. And a good shot of uh, Pat McDonald. Just going to say an 80% free throw shooter. Boy, he didn't look close to an 80% free throw shooter on that one. Miller bringing in uh, three different subs that time. Lakeland is uh, two for four at the line so far tonight. Coach Miller's played 12 already. Well, MSOE is four for four. I get Nygaard there. Yep, Paul goes on uh, Eric Nygaard. Former coach at Lakeland, Brian Miller, and then LSU, LSU <laughs> MSOE for 13 years. It's a long time. Nygaard out with his uh, two fouls. McNeil was back in. Kaminsky in from uh, Sheboygan. Played at Sheboygan North last year. Good pass. Shot is up and in by uh, Pig. Sam's played a total of seven minutes this season. Trying to get his feel of the college game. Just like being from a freshman to a senior in high school, freshman to senior in college, big difference. Service trying to back in. Little half hook is uh, no good. Coming away with it for MSOE was uh, Kermsey. Wolf three ball is good by Wojciech again. First lead of the game for that, was it? That was 23, Marty. Take that back, Kermsey with the three. Twenty-three to twenty-two. Where's your list here? Okay. Which one do you want? Anyone. Got it. Lakeland no threes. MSOE has three threes. And uh, you mentioned how well Lakeland was uh, shooting. Uh, it really hasn't been necessarily bad shooting the last few minutes. They've just been bad offense. Yeah, they haven't gotten any open looks. They were so smooth to start the game. You know, shooting four, they're almost 80%, but they haven't made a lot of baskets since. Only have what I try to do, my score sheet is based on four quarters and an overtime, so I have five columns. And what I try to do, Chris, is uh, in the second quarter column, I'll use that for the second 10 minutes of the oh, half. Okay. And uh, Lakeland only has uh, three points, one basket. Yeah, and uh, we've got minutes. almost five minutes in. Well, they only got 10 baskets in the game, and they had those quick uh, four right away. You get a good shot. Richard Bartson running that top camera. Sarah Balzer is on the floor camera. Scott Mailoff, our director in the truck. Chris Wright doing the color, and I'm the play-by-play -play guy, Mike Martin. Lakeland shooting 45% in the game, 46 on the season, so just about at their average. A little better ball movement there. McDonald had a good look, couldn't get it, but picking up the loose change and putting it in was Chris Kavich. Driving shot is no Ooh. good, but the uh, putback is. That basket was by uh, Colin S Subert. Well, they're calling him Siebert, so we will too. Leading score for them at minutes played with 35. James on a nice driving layup shot. He's got eight. Lakeland back on top by one. Whenever the fish need something, they go to James, and there was an easy picking up his pivot foot, travel. Siebert committing the uh, violation. 
Lakeland back up by one. Under five minutes, though. It's been a pretty quick half, Chris. Yep. McDonald inside the arc, couldn't get it in. Pig came away with it. Kick out pass. And the shot attempt by uh, Siebert is no good. James from outside the line, his shot is no good. Pretty quick offense. Miller saying slow it down. What did you think of that last shot by James? Pretty quick. Oh, he had to go to open shot, that's him. Oof. Oh boy. Well, they get contributions from a lot of guys. I got that one, Darville, 34. Yeah, that's what I had. His first basket of the season. School trying to go baseline, but uh, prevented from. No place to go. No, that was not a good, good move there. Good cut by James, and then uh, shot clock violation. Seeing how James is going to get that turnover, and that's not his fault. That was school and his thing, and that's the senior there. I think he thought he was fouled. Should have got the foul call. And uh, there, you come, here you see the back end of the play, him getting up. Yeah, that was he definitely got pushed. That could have been a foul. He's got a legitimate gripe there. Just the third turn. McDonald around. with a steal. Good quickness. And he puts it off the glass and in. Nice play by Pat McDonald. He has five points. And going hard to the hoop was Siebert. Oh, boy. A high flyer that time. And where was the defense, Marty? Turnover by McDonald. And uh, Kaminsky is going to get called for the foul. No, that post player for uh, MSOE, when he got the ball, he knew exactly what he was going to do. Yep. Saw the freshman on him, not as uh, bulky. Was able to force him right out of the way, too. At first, I thought it could have been an offensive foul. It's a nice little inbound play. Good quickness. Siebert going baseline, scores again. He's made his last two. Chris Kavich not able to get baseline. Miles doing a good job Boy. preventing him. Oh, service had a good look. Couldn't get the jump hook to go. Three-point lead by MSOE. Boy, they were stuck on 10 forever, and now they're uh, at 31, just like that. Colossi trying to take it to the hoop, couldn't get it in. And the jump shot by uh, Darville is no good, and Lakeland comes away with it. See if they can get some offense. That would have really added to the tough stretch for the Muskies. Nygaard's shot is off the rim hard. Darville gets the rebound. Under two minutes left in the half. Boy, Lakeland looks so good the first five, six minutes, but it's really changed. We've seen that before, drive down, kick out. Just switch positions there. 10 seconds left on the shot clock. Palasi looking to take Campos on the dribble. Spin move in the lane. Got wow. It. That was sweet. Pelosi started the game tonight, Chris, but uh, hasn't played a whole lot of minutes. McDonald trying to take it in the lane. Does, but uh, too many tall guys around him to get it up to the rim. Seabird again. Seen that before. That's been open all night, and that goes back to the opening, Marty, where you mentioned you need to have the defense. Right now, there is none. He started off so good. Yeah, they're just getting beat back down the floor. Siebert's a big guy. I mean, he's one of the taller kids out there. I'd get James back. Well, too late now. 
Service kick out to Campos. Three ball off the glass is no good. Under 40 seconds left. Charge. We're going to get a charge. Darville with a good idea, but uh, got to get under better control. Good coaching decision this time. Bring James and McNeil. I know McNeil has those fouls, but now it's an offense-defense situation. Explain to McNeil, you just can't pick up that extra foul now. We still have a shot clock situation, Chris. There's 34.9 seconds left. Shot clock, of course, 30 seconds. But uh, the Muskies should take it all the way down. Take that shot clock down. Don't give uh, the Raiders much of a chance to uh, get the last shot of the half. Where are you going? Where are you going? Where are you going? Yeah, Where are you not going? Not a smart move by Campos that time. Siebert wanted it but couldn't get it. Lakeland has it back with five seconds left. Over to McNeil. His jump shot from the wing is good to end the half. And they needed it. They needed it. We're at halftime. MSOE up 35-31. Gabby, how you doing? How was the play date and sleepover? Dad, it was great. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Hey, guys, what are you doing? Winning! Winning! Bye, boys, bye, game. Yeah! I'll see you in a little bit, guys. I love you. Hi, babe. How was school today? Hi, Dad. It was great. Okay, honey, I'll be home soon. Remember, you're never too far away from your kids to be a dad. Reach out and take a second to check in, because sometimes the smallest moments can have the biggest impact on a child's life. This is the moment I knew his future had no boundaries. There are some moments only the forest can inspire. Find yours at discovertheforest.org. I love taking care of my mom. It wasn't easy at first. She learned how to better communicate her needs. And you learned how to not ignore yours. I discovered how to make healthier meals. And I discovered how much I enjoyed them. Becoming a caregiver is a learning experience for everyone. Find articles, tips, and tools from experts and others who have been in your place. The Caregiving Resource Center at aarp.org slash caregiving. Marie, you have prediabetes. Prediabetes? I don't have time to eat right or exercise. I'm a busy mom. Oh, you're a busy mom. This is great news. Busy moms never get prediabetes. Wait, what? Let me just... Yeah, this is all the people at risk for prediabetes, and way over here, busy moms. No? Whew. Getting ready to start second half action here at uh, Lakeland University. Uh, MSOE on top, 35-31. Uh, Chris, uh, what do you got for shooting percentages and uh, rebounds and that sort of thing? Well, the thing that stands out for me, Marty, is the uh, MSOE almost shot 50%, which we talked about defense is important. Lakeland was just 14 of 34. Uh, they were 0 for 6 in their three-pointers, but not to be denied, Joshua McNeil hit that three for Lakeland's only three-pointer at the end of the half, and that was big. Instead of having a seven-point deficit at half, only trailing by uh, four. I think what uh, Scott has is the uh, live stats that Lakeland uh, produces. Wow. And uh, he's picking that up. A little bit hard to read, but uh, I like the way the announcers do it better. Well, that's pretty <laughs> nice right there. Pretty soon we can just uh, insert computer things in for voices and then... Then I can just talk. I don't have to put my head down all the time. Well, I was going to say, put the computer down. in and get rid of us. Oh, no, not that. <laughs> Robo announcers, little uh, Schubert shot is in, and he was fouled. 
Well, that's a planned play, Marty. You know, nice little screen off there, backdoor cut. You clear the guys away. I always used to run a little play like that as well in high school, but that one got, a, got away with it coming right out of half. That's when you're a coach and you say, oh, look at that's just how he drew it up, and whoops, but he didn't finish it. Oh, and then they come up with an offensive rebound oh, and putting it up and in for MSOE was uh, Alex Darville. He's starting the second half, Marty. Yeah, he had two points in the first half. I had him for three rebounds. They had him for four, so now oh. he's got five. McNeil taking it hard to the basket and scores. Now McNeil's uh, been pretty solid, Marty. That's his 12th point. He's five for six from the floor. Finished the half with that three-point basket really helped out. Yipper. Darville. That's not get a it good in. shot. And they had uh, Schubert on the line trying to save it. So Lakeland will get it back, even though it went off of Brandon James. Oh, Darvell, that's not the shot you want to take there. Your first, second three-pointer of the season. Nice lead. Here we go. Ooh. James trying to get it up and in, couldn't do it. Has a short jumper from the baseline, put that one up and in. James. Brandon with, James with 10 points yeah, now, Chris. I'm gonna say, average coming in at uh, 22. Kuskevich is guarding Schubert. I don't know if that's a good matchup or not, Chris. Nygaard out hustled for the ball. Now they're going to get a foul on Lakeland's Mark Kuskevich. Slapping at the ball. That's his second foul. Both of them here in this half. Here's another nice play, and it works to perfection. Someone's supposed to be there. Schubert. Oh, that's poor oh. defense. Yeah, and then an offensive rebound again, that one by uh, Darville, and Lakeland just not coming away with the loose balls. Gotta stay in front of your men. Lucky they didn't give up a layup there, Marty. Yeah, really. Darville with three offensive rebounds in the first minute and a half to start the second. Half. Velocity wanted to drive it again, but uh, too much traffic. Good job by Nygaard cutting off the cutter. Schubert gives it off. Uh, tried to feed it to his teammate, and then it got tipped right back to him. And Nygaard finally comes away with the rebound. Another one of those long offensive possessions, Chris. There's been a lot of those for the Red Raiders. I was thinking the same thing. James oh. had a good line on it, but it just didn't go in. Well, I'm gonna have ball to get a reach. taking a win. I think uh, I'm going to call that on uh, MSOE. What? Colossi wow. picks up the foul. Wow. First First team ball. I think what happened, Chris, was the ball got stolen away, and then I in thought, an effort to get it back, right. he fouled. I thought after the steal that he fouled because of got the steal because of the foul. So oh, that way. Okay. Before that, McDonald bringing it up. Uh, about 17 and a half minutes left. McDonald, quick Ooh. shot. Nails a three. Lucky there. Lakeland needed that. I didn't like that shot, Marty. It looked like he was all squared away, but fortunately for the fish, they're within one. Oh, boy. Taking it to the hoop was Colossi, and he gets fouled on the shot attempt. He'll be shooting a pair of free throws. MSOE was uh, four for four in the first half on their free throw shooting. They missed their first attempt here in the second half. So there are four for five in the game. Well, Lakeland only had six fouls in the whole half. They got four in the first three minutes here, Marty. Oh, and an empty trip. Lucky. Yeah, really. Over three in the second half. After going four for four in the first, 
Well, they're shooting only 63% from out there. That's not good. This should oh. automatic. James on a good drive, dishes it off to his teammate McNeil, and he puts it up and in. 14 points for uh, Joshua. Fadeaway is good. That one by Pelosi. A strange timeout there, but. Yeah. 41 to 40, there you see uh, Miller talking to the troops. He's not happy. They're not playing very good right now, especially on the defensive end. Well, they had a nice lead, and then they have a turnover, and a couple missed free throws, and big three, and a nice penetration and dish for an easy layup. Got the fish right back in it. You know, we talked about guys being hot and cold. Uh, Max Wojciech had 12 points in the first 10 minutes of the first half. He hasn't scored since. He hasn't even hardly taken any shots no. since then. No, yeah, I don't have any. He was five, I had him five for five. What did they have? They had him five for five. You know who they said was the only guy that could stop Michael Jordan? Dean Smith, <laughs> <laughs> his coach. Maybe that's what's happening here. Miller just isn't putting them in. James got around. You see him put his head down and duck down underneath the defense? Well, and he's quick. We've seen that before. He's a matchup problem for all the teams that he plays. Schubert got hacked going in the lane. No call, but he got it to his teammate, Sommerfeld, who put it up and in. Rolling down to the 16. That's a walk. Oh, they're going to gonna call a foul on the way in. Hermsey picks up the foul. He traveled because of the foul. Sorry right. about that. Yeah. They're right up on James, but. Uh, McNeil. Couldn't get it in, had a good look. Couldn't get it to go. Raiders bring it up. They're up by one. And uh, McNeil picking up the foul. That's not a good one. Third? Third. His third. Uh, it's a uh, 16 minute mark. Whenever uh, Siebert Gets the ball, number 12. He is looking to go to the hoop. That's where he's uh, yep. well, earned yeah. his living tonight. He's had 16 shot attempts already tonight, Marty. The three ball attempt by uh, Pig is no good, and Lakeland comes away with it. Good defensive possession. McDonald, McNeil in the lane, couldn't get it in. Tough break. Schubert. Oh, stolen away. McDonald tipped it away. James scores and is fouled. Colin Siebert's going to pick up the foul, and James is going to get the three-point attempt the old-fashioned way. James now 7 of 12 from the floor. Look at it. There's the effort earlier. Watch this steal. McDonald. Doop. Yeah, maybe it might have been Nygaard. Too much, too much dribbling by Pig. Oh, nice shot. Dribbling into two guys and then Oh, one. couldn't get the free throw though, Chris. Lakeland up one, 44-43. There you go. Steal again by James. He's out in front of the group. Lays it up and in. He's getting hot at the right time. 15-50 left. 14.55 left in the ball game. Lakeland goes up three. Third turnover of the half. Ugh. Driving shot by Wojciech is no good. And then we get a foul on uh, Wojciech. Uh, pardon me, Siebert. Been a good two minute run here by Lakeland. Trailing. Sparked by Brandon James, who we thought would be the impact player. Uh, let me correct myself. Woodcheck did get the foul, Chris, and it's his third. 
Wow. Here he goes. James, oh, and there's a travel by uh, Carlton. Deontay. That's just seven turnovers tonight. You mentioned in the opening, they had to cut down on turnovers. They were averaging 16 a game. I knew you'd be interested. Oh yeah. Deep ball is no good. Lakeland uh, comes away with it. Kavich trying to make the cross court pass to James, but uh, threw it away. Siebert, good pass inside, but passing up the shot was Darville. Instead, they're gonna go for a nice easy layup by uh, Sommerfeld. That was a sweet move, Chris. Summerfield with no points coming into the game. He's got six tonight. Yep. Couple baskets. Deontay Carlton in the ball game. Along with uh, Chris Kavich and James Ooh. with a three ball glancing off the rim. I thought that was right on, Marty. It was. It just was not quite uh -huh. high enough. Darville. Couldn't get it in. Wojcik, jump shot from the lane, no good. And Lakeland comes away with a good hustle by uh, James. A good ball movement by the Muskies. James with a oh. wide open three, couldn't get it to go in. Good look, good look. Driving layup attempt is no good. Oh, Chris Kavich got it just above the sweet spot. It went off his tummy out of bounds. Boy, Lakeland is getting point, excuse me, MSOE getting point blank layup Ooh. attempts, and they can't put it in. Breaks for the fish, they still lead by one. We saw that in that girls game prior to this, several times where they had shots right in front of the basket, and couldn't get it in. School couldn't get on his man, and making the basket was Kermsey, a two-pointer. MSOE up by one now. McDonald gets it into McNeil, spinning, driving, and scoring. Oh, man, Boy, was that a nice move. I think we're going to get a lot out of McNeil. Kermsey. Gives it off. Good ball movement by uh, MSOE. Kermsey got away with a push off there, right in front of the official, too. Uh, 16 foul. Chris Kavich picks up his second foul. His third, pardon me, all of them here in the second half, too. Miles put his head down, couldn't get it in. And Nygaard strong, pulling it away from two MSOE players. Lakeland has it up one. Seven rebound for Nygaard. The Panther strikes. McDonald uh, always see appears to be out of control somewhat, but uh, at least that's how it appears to me. All goes on Gabe Ware. Ware got a few minutes in in the first half. Seeing some action here. Jacob Service in the ball game. And uh, James comes back in. He's got to stay on the floor, Marty. When he was off the floor, James, in the end of the first half there, everything fell nice. apart. Service and James lost it. Siebert. Oh, a nice layup attempt going full speed. Laid it sweetly off the glass. And now th the Raiders are up off, by one. Off the turnover. And, and James. Palasi. Fall on James. Palasi will be at the line shooting a pair. 
for James. That's his third fall, Chris. You gotta watch him and McNeil both have three. Timeout, Lakeland. Yeah, good timeout by Coach Annenson. And again, you know, we saw this in the first half. Lakeland really had good offense going here in the second half, and now the last uh, few trips down, it's just uh, hasn't been there. Right. Well, they've had some shots. James had some shots that just missed. Uh, if you those go in, <laughs> everything changes. Oh, but now back-to-back right. -back turnovers. You know, they've only had four turnovers in the half. Unfortunately, the last two possessions in a close game well, will stand out a little bit more. They were actually doing quite well with the turnovers until you said something. All right. <laughs> When's our next game? <laughs> actually, our next game will be December 5th. We're back out here. This will be our last trip out to Lakeland. Uh, when UW Sheboygan comes out to play the uh, Lakeland JVs, uh, there is a rumor going around that uh, Tom Desitel is going to be part of the uh, WSCS announcing crew. Uh, Scott wanted to put him on a camera, and so did you and I, but uh, Richard and Sarah said no. <laughs> they did not want to come over by the table and announce with us. Hey, the fans, those are the same guys that were here last time. They're not quite as uh, vociferous as they were the other night. Well, it's a little early yet. We've got to get them under about the five-minute mark. That's when their presence is felt. They were definitely proactive during the end of the girls' game. Yes. They got a chance to beat uh, Stevens yeah, Point. Right, and, yeah, uh, exactly. They lost by four, 40 to 36. last four minutes of that game, they couldn't put any points on the board. That's what kind of hurt them. Had missed a couple free throws. And uh, just could not get a good shot off. Pelosi breaks a string of misses by the Raiders here in the second half. It's now 51 to 48. I think they still need to run the offense. And then, uh, in other words, what I'm saying is James is still going to be patient. Let the game yeah. come to him. That's the guy to go to. McNeil in and out. James. Oh. Not a bad shot. I like that shot, Marty, just didn't go. Schubert puts his head down and barrels in, but had to kick it out. Good defense by the fish. Stick with it, boys. Get the rebound. Oh, oh. Neil couldn't quite come away with it. I was just looking as uh, the action was going on. Schubert Siebert had 18 points in 35 minutes in that uh, game the other night against Beloit. So he's uh, one of the guys they really look to to fill a lot of minutes and score some points. The concern here is did Siebert's ball hit the rim? I believe it did. And then on the rebound, Miles got the rebound and the shot clock went off, but they did not restore. Oh, they're gonna what? They call two seconds, so they're saying it did not hit the rim. Okay, so two seconds left on the shot clock for MSOE. Their ball out of bounds. Sure, they got to play for this, Marty. One bounce and a shot and a pretty good look that time by. Uh, Kermsey, but he couldn't get it to drop, and uh, Lakeland needs to score some baskets because yeah, they've had cold. some trouble shooting the ball. Yeah, they were doing so well, now it's gotten cold. McDonald with a pull-up 12-footer, got it in. They needed that. McDonald didn't have a great first half, but two for two here. He's four of 11, excuse me, four of nine in the game. Ball situation is uh, Lakeland has seven, MSOE has five. He just rolled under the 10 minute mark of the second half. Wow. Siebert slips two defenders and takes it to the hoop, and he couldn't get it in. Wow. He had a good look, Chris. He did, but I thought the Muskies had a good defense. McDonald with another one. That's a three ball. 
I thought the fish had really good defense on that. And he somehow split that, had a lamp and missed it. Oh, they gave him a three on that, Marty, huh? Yeah, he was outside the line. Gives him the lead back. Two point lead for the Muskies. Short jumper is up and in by Sommerfeld. He's had a nice night, eight points now. Three of three from the floor. A couple of free throws. Here's the hot hand. He's got another one. Pat McDonald. Ho oh, ho. Four of four and a half, Marty. Three threes. 11 points along with the five in the first. He's got 16 points. Nice flop. Not going to call that. Bad shot. Yeah, not a good shot attempt there by Gabe Ware. Find McDonald. Where yep. is that young man? McNeil taking it to the basket, but he got fouled. I think they're going to get Palasi on that one. Let's see. Well, McDonald's standing out on the outside, so they draw a little more attention out there, which creates openings in the lane. So Lakeland takes advantage of that. Just when things were going so bad for Lakeland, next thing you look up on the board, they're <laughs> up by three. Yeah. Make a couple baskets makes yep. all the difference in the world, and there you see the foul by Palasi. Well, McDonald hitting three in a row. Next uh, foul by uh, MSOE will send uh, Lakeland to the line. Three ball attempt is off, no good. Reload. Shot by Chris Kavich is uh, not even close. Darville chased it down and scored. Good hustle by that young man. Eight ten left in the ball game. Feeling it, feeling well, it. Well, that's a different kind of uh, shot attempt, Chris. The other ones, they worked the ball to him and he let the game flow to him. That was a force in the action. Well, I think they thought because he hit those threes, they came out on him. So actually, I thought that was a smart move going to the basket. Hey, you know best. All right, we're going to have a one and one attempt here. See if you can make a free throw and then pop in the next one. Well, he missed a couple in the first half, right, Marty? He was one for two in the first okay, half. So he's a nine but for you said 12 he... on the season. Okay. Oh. Good rotation, but couldn't get it to drop in. It's uh, free throws at this juncture of the game that can uh, help ease some of the stress. We'll check... Uh, couldn't get it. Siebert uh, wanted to take it to the hoop. He's got it again, looking to go. 12 footer is off, no good. McDonald oh. with a strong rebound. Let me tell you, he looked so good in that first half. He looks terrible in the second half with his shot. Oh, was that Siebert? Yeah, Siebert. You're uh, thinking uh, Wojcik. Wojcik, yeah. That still didn't look like a good square up shot. A uh, jump shot is up and in by Nygaard, a two-pointer. His first basket of the ball game, Chris. First points. Well, Lakeland's defense is much better here. Ball caught in the rim. That's a tie-up situation. Sommerfeld making a good one-on-one -on -one move, but uh, wedged it in the uh, between the basket and the uh, backboard. Arrow was pointing Lakeland's way, so they get it. They're up three with uh, under seven minutes left. 6.55. James uh, lost it. Uh, did he get it tipped away, or did he lose it? It looked like he lost it to us, wouldn't you say? Yes, but there's a little contact, so that's one of those you just give it play on. Are you going to see Watch it? What do you contact. think? What do you think, fans? See, oh, oh, maybe he did knock uh, it away. He did slap, the defender slapped his hands like he tipped it away, so that's probably what did happen. McDonald Bingo. open. He's oh. feeling it, but he couldn't. James over the back, good call. Oh, that was but right for, there, Marty. I know, and you know that fall is a costly one for James. He's now got four. Oh, <laughs> you wanted it. I thought that was <laughs> right in there. And I thought he let the game flow to him and uh, the penetration and pitch and just couldn't get it in. I would take James out here. 
You have the lead. Woodcheck uh, at the line, shooting a one and one. I would take James out here. You have the lead. Six thirty-eight left. But I would have him in my right coat pocket in case of uh, anything not going so well. Fourteen points now for Woodcheck. I bring him back about four minute mark. McDonald. Has a shot blocked, going into the land of the Giants. You want to go in there. Well, just as the offense was going, now <laughs> it's not going again, Marty. Right. But they're ahead. Siebert looking to go one on one. Dish underneath. Shot is up and in by Darville, and it was a great pass by Siebert. Right. Donald just a little slow on the rotation down, and timeout. Lakeland. Timeout Lakeland. MSOE has the lead. It's a full timeout, Scott, so we can take a short break, catch our breath. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Back at uh, the Wolfson Gym on the campus of Lakeland University, and there's uh, Scott putting up that uh, live stat sheet feed from uh, Lakeland. Yeah, that's you. I'm sure all your numbers are exactly the same. No. No. Yeah, but uh, so they were different. You'd be right and they'd be wrong. That's probably true. <laughs> I just want to get close on the scoring. Well, I'll tell you, that black kind of blends in on their jersey. It's uh, I was talking to uh, Adam, the AD, I'd say his last name, but I don't know how. Anyway, he, he said too, it's there's not much contrast on off of those red jerseys, and it's a little hard to pick up. A little easier this half because they're down on this end of the floor. Plus, uh, some of those kids are actually a little familiar now. We know how they walk and how they yep. shoot. Not how they chew gum though. We'll check a back off on a flop. He had an open shot, didn't take it. Gave it up to McNeil, and uh, not a good shot attempt. Oh, no. Uh, McNeil picks up a fall. I believe that's oh, his fourth. Oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy, oh, boy. Five minutes left. 16 for him, points. 18 for James. Those are our two high scores. They look, both have four fouls. And the brain trust of the fish are talking over there. What should we do with this foul situation? You know. Summerfeld's first free throw is in. If you have an opportunity on defense, I still think you need to get, you know, a little substitution in for McNeil or James. Oh, height paid off there, Chris. Darville was a little bit taller than Nygaard and was able to get the ball off the, off the missed free throw. That was costly. Well, Alex Darville <laughs> is making an impact. The other day he had one rebound. Today he is 10. Jeez. And worst of all, if you're a Fish fan, four of them here in the second half on the offensive glass. When we uh, do our preparation for these games, you know, we only we can only go off of what uh, what's out there. And since he only played one game, that's it. You really can't get a feel for how these players are going to play. You know, if we had seven, eight, nine games, you could tell. Well, yeah, this guy's averaging 18 points a game. Yep. He's obviously going to be their main scorer. Yep. Uh, same with the rebounding thing. You know, maybe by the end of the year. Uh, Darville will be one of their main rebounders. Yeah. He certainly didn't show it in the first game. 
Well, according to minutes, he didn't start, but he was the uh, fifth most minutes the other night. And uh, he is a senior. The two guys that came off the bench, now Wojciech started tonight and is having a nice game. Kermsey did not start the other night, played 22 minutes and had 16 points. Uh, he's got five tonight. You know, he hasn't uh, been a main scorer, but uh, he has gotten out there. Yeah, he's been kind of quiet, actually, Marty. Yeah, you're right. Two for six. I was trying to be nice about it. Oh, well, he's two <laughs> for six. I got him for a couple of rebounds. Driving to the basket and scoring was Sommerfeld and picking up the foul was uh, Eric Nygaard and that's his third and that was costly because they're up four now, have a chance to bump it up to five. And they're in double bonus. Sommerfeld zero for zero in field goal attempts in that first half. Second half, five attempts and four of them in and a free throw to boot. Ten this points. has been a game of runs though, Marty. Guess whose turn it is? Yeah, you're absolutely right. Fish turn. McNeil in the lane, forcing it. Couldn't get it, but he did draw the foul. And now I'd maybe have s someone at the scorer's table here for McNeil. If he makes both these free throws, I'd get somebody in, Marty. Just a lot of time, 5-12. You know, and the reason I say McNeil more than James, even though I thought James should have been out earlier, is because he's more active under the basket. Right, yeah. He more more tendency opportunities to, to foul uh, with contact and things. Where James can be a little smarter on the lay outside. off because he's guarding a smaller man who will probably be more on the perimeter. But, He'll let her but they're going to let the him line. in the game. Let's see? I'll yeah, okay, three-point <coughs> lead with a five. See, it plays out. Pulling down to the five-minute mark. A shot no good. Nygaard got it. Good hustle by him. McDonald chasing oh, it down. Don't have to rush. A lot of game left, Marty. A lot of game. Eighth of the game left. James looking to go. Had it stripped away. Trying to go through two defenders. And then making a smart move on the offensive end was uh, Alex Darville. Pulling it back out, running some shot clock, under five minutes now. Here's a set play. Darville, good dish off to Palasi, but Four. then he pulls it out. Siebert's shot is no good. Which and way are they major go? collision between Which way are we going here? 34 and 34. Watch this. I know. Marty, this is a tough call. Both guys going for the rebound at the same time. Watch this. They're both going. Ooh. I mean, they're both headed the same direction. I think uh, Eric Nygaard is the uh, unlucky one in that, Chris. I think he's going to pick up the foul. I think you're right. But again, the ball's out there. Two guys colliding. Yeah, yeah you're ball. absolutely right. I mean, how do you do that? How do you make a decision on that? Nobody clearly had the rebound. I mean, it was bang, bang. Right. Nygaard went down very hard. He's going to have to step off the floor. Uh, Darville went down also, but uh, he popped up right away. He seemed to be uh, pretty good shape after that major collision. Good replay again, Scott. Uh, very good. Scott's had a number of those tonight. Failed a little bit in the first half, but uh, he stepped up his game here in the second, kind of like you, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> Sarah and Richard have been on top of things all night. Well, of course. Of course. And I'm still waiting for my niche. Well, you had your Snickers bar, Marty. Yeah, that didn't you. help. I thought it would. And here's oh. a big impact player in the second half. Crawled it in. He's got seven points in the second half. He had Summerfeld that. has that as good second half, too, You Chris. betcha. Those two have been the low. They've gone to the bigger fellas for the points. The guy that's uh, quieted down this uh, last part of the second half has been Colin Siebert. He had 10 in the first half and four early in the uh, second half. And uh, his last 10 minutes or so, he's not... Uh, well, he's missed six of his last seven, Marty. That's part of the reason. 
McDonald. Earlier, he had it. Yeah, he's drifting a little bit on that shot. It's a five point lead for uh, MSOE. Lakeland definitely not out of it, but uh, they need to get a little run going. Well, and MSOE much more of Wojciech attacking the basket. Lays it up and in. They're Spotted an opening and. They've really slowed down MSOE with the lead here and with the foul situation. They're trying to get to the basket. Let's take advantage of the double bonus. That time there was no help and now seven point lead. Which way? Oh, okay. We could see it from here. I don't know if they can see it on the monitor, but uh, Chris Kavich threw the arm out trying to get baseline. See if you can spot it here. And he saw it at the end, but at that point, the contact had already happened, so it's good call. Needs to make the first to get the second, and again, Lakeland oh couldn't get it in, and then Service commits another foul, or commits a foul, and uh, things are not working out good for the uh, Muskies here late in the game. Three minutes, they are they were comfortably going and the offensive end has kind of let them down. We gotta get back to uh, McNeil or James. First Absolutely. free throw attempt by Summerfield was no good. It's an break. Over. break, break, break. Yep. Be a nice trip to get a basket. They're down seven. The Muskies need to score. Don't force it. McDonald steps outside the line. Fadeaway is no good. Again, not going straight up, Chris. He's drifting on that shot. He's 0 for his last four after making his first four of the half. Wojcik off the glass, no good. Put back by Siebert is good. His first basket in a while. It's getting away, Marty. Yeah, nine point lead now. And again, McNeil and James, neither are touching the ball for shots. McNeil got it. A three ball deep in the corner. <laughs> Chris just said he hasn't touched the ball in a while. He couldn't wait to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm glad. <laughs> I, it's not the shot I intended for him. I thought he'd get a little closer, but uh, he hit his second three, uh, first one at the end of that first half. But uh, I still would rather have uh, James doing the uh, ball handling, drive penetration. They'll all collapse on him, which will create opening shots and easier shots for McDonald. Yeah, good point. You know, I'd like to see him catch and shoot instead of having to do it off the dribble. Right, and again, that would also create some closer range shots for uh, McNeil, who's more of a, you know, uh, shooter from around the uh, the arc, a little inside the arc, off the free throw line a little bit. Foul we'll take situation. That three, though. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. I was just gonna say, like getting that three though. <laughs> right, uh, I was gonna say a foul situation, each team is in the double bonus now, uh, but Lakeland's gotta do a little better job of uh, defending without fouling and then uh, rebounding those misses. Well, they gotta make sure that they do not, just play D, you don't have to foul. You know, oh, it looks like they're gonna do some press here, Marty. You know, you, you, just can't, oh, you can't create easy baskets and you know, all you have to do is work on D and they, for a stretch here in the second half, they've done a nice nice job of that. A little surprised Nygaard's not back in the game as well. Service and he might, uh, well, we don't know his, health situation, he might uh, be hurt. But uh, yeah, it'd be nice to have uh, him in there. He does a nice job rebounding and defending. Here comes the trap. Good job to go to the middle of the floor as opposed to the corner. A very smart basketball player there. Lakeland doesn't have a good matchup for Siebert. Whoever guards him is always shorter than he is. And Siebert's pretty quick. Yeah, and I play can move with the ball pretty there good. There you go. Although Chris Kavich with a steal. Don't need threes, boys. Don't need threes. Their only bonus right now, just get baskets. 
Stretch this game out. They're trying to spread the floor. McDonald kicks it out to uh, James. Watch him drive now. Kick, there's the opening. Oh, and he didn't take it. And he gets a shot blocked by Siebert. A little Should've... payback by Siebert after that steal by Chris Kavich. Well, he had an opening, Marty. He just didn't decide to shoot it. Yeah, he should. Then... you're right. Should have taken that first shot. Now you need to stop. Every time you, now you need to stop without fouls. Ten on the shot clock. Wojcik in the first half would have taken that open three. Not oh. now. And gliding through, getting a nice pass was Alex Darville, and uh, he has 10 points in the second half to go along with two from the first. He's got 12 points, and most of those, Chris, have come late in the second half. Yeah, I got him four of six from the floor, and uh, as I mentioned before, 11 rebounds. It'd be a stretch now with uh, under a minute left, 58.7 seconds left. Uh, now they almost got to go for three. Well, or get quick twos. You can stretch it out. There's still time left, but you needed a stop, Marty. You need to get a stop. Instead, you gave up a layup. You know, they got the stop the time before on Correct. the steal, and then uh, Chris Kavich had his shot blocked. He should have taken the shot deeper in the corner where he was wide open. Yeah. Well, we mentioned in the opening, uh, MSOE was picked for seventh in the league, Lakeland sixth. We said this would be a close battle, and for the most part, it's been to the last two minutes. I mean, wasn't too long ago that Lakeland was up, like 53-48, and everything was going real well. And when you look at the boys coming out, James and uh, McDonald and Chris Kavich, those three guys, they go with basically a three-guard lineup, they are always shorter than the other team's guards. Same thing in lacrosse against right. lacrosse. Yep. Exactly. And that's why I was saying who's ever guarding Davis us. Davis is wide open. He's wide open. On, he was wide open over here. And a turnover. Boy. Well. Oh. Wanted to do a little bit of uh, weave action on top and uh, just couldn't handle the ball. Carlton and uh, School come in for McNeil and James. Offense, defense, bringing in defenders. McNeil and James each have four fouls. Just the 11th turnover on Lakeland, but just untimely turnovers. Yeah, that was a tough one. Now you got to foul. You got to foul. You got to foul. Wojcik is fouled by uh, McDonald. He'll be at the line to shoot a pair. Max is uh, two for two from the line. Those two happened in uh, this half. That was McDonald's first foul, Chris. He missed two the other night, one for three. Well, I always look at these situations in what do you have to get to. That's why when I watch Badger games, Marty, I sit there and I talk to the TV. Now, if we could get to this plenty of points, we're good. You just talk to the TV? You're yes. a lot better man than I am. <laughs> so right now I'm thinking to myself, well, if you have, you know, four, if they get to like 76, it's impossible to win. You know, so they're at 73. Because that means they would need about five threes, and they're not going to get that. Chris Kavich uh, got hammered to the floor. No call on the driving layup attempt. And then uh, James commits the foul, and that'll be his fifth. 20 points to end up with, Marty? 16. So about six points behind his average. Had 19 the other night when we were here. Siebert will be at the line. He uh, was 0 for 1, had a three-point attempt. He made a basket and was fouled and missed the uh, free throw. So right now he's 1 for 2. He's got fifth, six. 18 points now. 10 in the first half, 8 in the second. I had James 8 of 14 tonight from the floor. Took care of the ball well, too. He only had those four turnovers. Ugh. Campos' three ball is no good. 
McNeil's shot was blocked and uh, committing the foul was Chris Kavich. Wojciech will be at the line again. Twenty point eight seconds left. Well, on one hand, oh, I'm wrong here. I am wrong. Wojciech makes his free throw. He's got twenty. Lakeland just five of twenty from three. And just two guys have made them tonight, Marty. McNeil and McDonald. So if you don't have a Mick in front of your name, they <laughs> haven't got a three-pointer made. That's pretty amazing. Yeah, oh boy. Oh boy, a little behind the back dribble didn't pan yeah. out so well. 13 seconds let left. This, uh, we got to mention this one kid, Carl Gavinciak came in, number 44, we gotta get that name, kinda rolls off your tongue. And that's gonna be our final. MSOE playing a good basketball game from start to finish, wins it 77 to 63. They were led by Max Wojciech with 20 points. Uh, Colin Siebert was also a force out on the floor, he had 18 points. And uh, doing most of the damage in the second half was Dylan Sommerfeld. He had uh, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 points. Uh, for Lakeland, Brandon James had 16. Pat McDonald uh, was lighting it up there for a while. Chris, he had 16 points also. And uh, leading all scorers was Joshua McNeil for Lakeland. He had 21 points, 16, 17, 19, 21 points. That's right. Well, tough loss for Lakeland, Marty, but I uh, want to wish you a happy Thanksgiving and everybody out there. Yep. I uh, think the same thing. Good thoughts. Uh, we want to thank all our fans for watching. For the crew and my partner, Chris Wright, I'm Mike Martin saying thanks for watching, everybody. Our next game will be uh, December 5th, and we're back out here. UW Sheboygan will play uh, Lakeland JV team. And uh, one more time, Lakeland uh, suffers another setback, 77 to 63 to MSOE. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you down the road.